people of Los Angeles County will long remember the hours of fire and ruin. 60 mile an hour winds whip flames through the area in the worst fire disaster in Southern California's history. 456 homes are destroyed. Former Vice President Richard M. Nixon douses the roof of his Brentwood home in an effort to save it from the Holocaust. Firemen worked around the clock battling the raging flames. Damage estimates are as high as $24 million. The half million dollar mansion of film star Burt Lancaster and the home of Zsa Zsa Gabor are destroyed, along with those of Joey e. Brown, Joan Fontaine, and Walter Wanger. Here and there, a chimney still stands, a small reminder of elegant mansions leveled by hungry flames. The 1961 Bel Air Fire is among the most famous, but wildfires are nothing new in Southern California. Watch that structure and get ready to deploy there, get the fire up. You got it. Southern California's climate embodies all of the ingredients for disastrous wildfires. Little rainfall, hot summers, and dry Santa Ana winds. When a fire starts under these conditions, almost nothing can stop it. We have averaged something like 500 homes per year lost since the 1950s. Now, despite very effective fire suppression efforts, the situation seems to only have gotten worse. So that since the year 2000, we've averaged a loss of 1,000 homes per year from wildfires. Southern California's fire ecology is unlike that of anywhere else in the United States. Fire control strategies developed for mountain forests don't have the same results here. Can science help uncover new answers to help Southern California manage and live with wildfires? The U.S. Geological Survey has recently embarked on a large-scale study known as the Southern California Wildfire Risk Scenario Project. They've brought together an international team of scientists. This ongoing research supports agencies on the front lines of fire management. Through a scientific lens, valuable data and tools provide insight and answers for living with fire. The goal of the Fire Risk Scenario Project is to reduce housing losses in the future and at the same time minimize wildlife habitat losses. The weather conditions that cause these fires occur every year. Thus, in Southern California, we need to change the way we look at fires. Nobody talks about trying to stop earthquakes. Wildfires require the same sort of approach. Scientists want to understand how fires are ignited and which factors that cause homes to burn can be controlled. For example, why do some communities burn and others don't? The project has already uncovered some important findings. The scientists analyzed the locations of nearly 6,000 homes destroyed or damaged by wildfires since 2001. What we're finding really is that location is the most significant risk factor. And the most dangerous locations are those along ridgetops, in wind quarters, Santa Ana wind quarters, as well as when there's really low housing density or the homes are scattered in isolated clusters of development. These homes not only are at more risk, but they're also more difficult for firefighters to get to. Some common assumptions about wildfires have also been challenged by new scientific findings. Chaparral is the predominant ecosystem in Southern California. These native shrublands are a unique, dynamic community of plants and animals. Scientists have discovered that standard fire control techniques, such as prescribed fires, may not be suitable for Southern California chaparral. When I first started work at the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area in 2001, 
the park had had a 20-year program of prescribed burning. The objective of that burning was to provide wildfire safety to the local communities and also to promote the health of our shrubland ecosystems. But according to the National Park Service, neither of these outcomes was achieved. Research has now revealed that prescribed burning has no effect on the fire pattern in Chaparral. Another complex issue is mastication and the removal of chaparral from the landscape. Mastication can be valuable for creating defensible space and fuel breaks to help firefighters protect homes, but scientists are trying to analyze its potential trade-offs. The problem is that fuel breaks often don't stop fires in progress, particularly under really high wind conditions and when the fuel is really dry. Our research has put some numbers and statistics behind this and we're showing that fuel breaks really don't stop fires under these strong and severe weather conditions. They really only work when firefighters are present or under mild weather conditions. There are other questions about the effectiveness of chaparral removal because non-native weeds move in, which are much more flammable. Combined with drier conditions due to climate change and more frequent fire ignitions due to people, these weeds may lead to a longer fire season. At the same time, native wildlife habitat is eliminated. The scientists continue to study how to balance the impact of chaparral removal and the necessity of fuel treatments. But vegetation on the landscape is only part of the equation. More than 95% of all fires in Southern California are caused by humans, not by natural sources like lightning strikes. Human factors have increased fire ignitions and fire frequency dramatically. Scientists are studying the options available for reducing human ignitions, such as those that start along roadways or by arcing power lines during high wind conditions. The scientists are also studying how homeowners can reduce their risk of home loss when a fire does start. To be able to go look at how things were before the fire is phenomenal. This is a new thing that we're able to do this. They examined foot by foot, houses, yards around them, landscaping, accessory structures, even the landscape slope, and then analyzed what burned and what did not. This research is leading us to reverse our thinking about wildfires. Instead of the traditional from the wildland in approach, research results are telling us we need to think from the house out. Fire questions in Southern California are more complex than they seem, and project scientists have much more to investigate. Ultimately, they hope to integrate all of these wildfire factors into what is known as a decision model. We're building quite a complex model um, which will, is tremendously exciting in, in scientific terms. Um, uh, so it's, it's groundbreaking stuff. The model will give resource managers a tool to understand which combination of strategies, from fuel treatments to land use planning to urban landscaping, will have the greatest potential for managing wildfire risk in Southern California. Yeah, it's established. It's going to be coming down the canyon. Southern California experiences the greatest fire losses of any area in the U.S. and perhaps even the world. In the future, how can we balance fire hazard and reducing the risk of fire hazards for humans and at the same time maintain natural wildlands and for their intrinsic value as resources? Like earthquakes, Southern California wildfires can't be prevented, but the risks they pose to our communities and landscapes can be managed. So it's time to re-examine how we look at these problems to find out what is effective so that dollars we put in to prevent wildfire losses actually has a benefit, that we actually see a reduction in those losses in the future. The really important part about having rigorous scientific data 
to back up the recommendations that we make is because they are counterintuitive, because they run contrary to the way work has been done for 30 years. Led by the USGS, the team of scientists hopes to add to our understanding of wildfire factors. The resulting research can assist managers and planners in finding solutions to reduce the risk of home and habitat loss and help Southern California truly learn to live with fire. Nearly 77,000 acres are history tonight, all burned as firefighters continue to try to gain an upper hand on the Brian Hickey is in Paula Pines, the very latest on the firefighting efforts. Drought dry California, the rapidly spreading King Fire sparking. On September 13th, 2014, at 4.32 p.m., the Fire Protection Dispatch Center received a 911 call reporting a structure fire. I just broke into a house. I'm just seeing if anybody's here. I just broke into a house. The alarm went off. Um, there's a forest fire, it's off, uh... He was advised to wait for deputies to arrive, but he had fled the scene. Included in the initial response of fire engines was one of the state's renowned arson investigator experts, Captain Tom Oldag. As the engines were arriving, they could see and smell light smoke, but would have to hike this rugged terrain to get to the source of the fire. Investigator Oldag took a different approach, and approached the fire from Moon Lane in an attempt to cut off the fire and stop it from spreading. As the fire crews arrived at the origin of the fire, they heard a male voice yell for help. The firefighters made a desperate attempt to get to him, and as they did, they noticed at least two more fires had been separately ignited. Was this arsonist lighting more fire in an attempt to trap the firemen, cover his tracks, or make sure the entire forest burned to the ground? As Oldag drove down Moon Lane, he encountered some residents that said they had just seen a man fleeing the area. And we saw, we came across him and uh, asked him, you know, what is he doing here and where does he live? And he's kind of uh, very sketchy with his answers. When he first saw us, he told us our house is going to burn down. You better get home, your house is going to burn down. 2,500 plus firefighters continued to try and gain control. In just one day, 42,000 acres burned, showing no signs of containment, let alone control. Old Ag, realizing the magnitude of this arson investigation and the resources it would take to investigate, requested fellow arson task force member, Eldorado County District Attorney Investigator Dave Stevenson. The two investigators started right here with what they deemed as the area of origin. They had located at least two more areas of origin, which definitely pointed to what they referred to as a multiple area of origin fire, a confirmed arson. They knew that they had an arsonist on their hands. Due to the gravity of the fire, the fact that it was still burning, and the need to preserve evidence in an environment that was ever-changing, we elected to use an aerial video platform, more commonly known as a, a quadcopter, to fly the scene and preserve the evidence as it existed on the time when the fire started. Investigator Richard Pesci was called in to fly the copter, and the footage you see here is the invaluable evidence retained by the quadcopter's flights in documenting the scene. As firefighters from local, state, and federal agencies poured into El Dorado County to battle the blaze, the investigation into who started this fire was ongoing and around the clock. Investigators from the U.S. Forest Service with the expertise in cause and origin were brought in to process the crime scene, while the arson task force investigators continued to track down leads, interview witnesses, and find the arsonist. Wayne Allen Huntsman entered the Safeway grocery store right here in Pollock Pines. This is actual surveillance video obtained by investigators showing him stealing alcohol and exiting the store. It's not exactly clear what happened or why, but we do know that Wayne Allen Huntsman admitted to lighting a fire at the point of origin to stay warm after a long hike on a record-breaking 93-degree day. Huntsman, then in what some speculate is an attempt to get hero status with the community or in good graces with his girlfriend, took this selfie video of himself standing in between the two different 
fires. Note the smile on his face as he tries to claim he is in grave danger. Huntsman fled from fire personnel towards Moon Lane, then out to Four Bay Road where he encountered this good Samaritan. I saw a gentleman walking um, to the right of my vehicle by the lake. And as I pulled over, I looked at the guy, said, do you need a ride? And he said, yes. Huntsman accepted the ride and began his tale of how he escaped danger and even provided the selfie video. The retired fireman, sensing the importance of this video, took a video of the video, which later became evidence. Arson investigations of this magnitude sometimes take weeks, months, years, and sometimes are never even solved. In this case, Wayne Allen Huntsman had no idea when he started this fire that the citizens of El Dorado County get involved and are connected to their community. And when they see something, they say something. Thanks to local, state, and federal resources and the community of Pollock Pines, Wayne Allen Huntsman was in custody within five days of him igniting this 97,717-acre blaze that took over 27 days to control. On April 8, 2016, in the Superior Court of El Dorado County, Wayne Allen Huntsman pled guilty to three felony counts of arson and admitted to several allegations concerning injury to firefighters and the burning of multiple homes. His effective sentence will be 20 years in prison. This case was unlikely to have this successful of an outcome without the help of some concerned citizens who were willing to step up, take action, and when they see something, say something. If you see something, say something.